Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Laylor. I am the Interim Vice President of Research and Innovation at the college. Um, native New Yorker, uh, a place where my parents worked in special education for more than 40 years. So it's tr truly uh, an honor to be here tonight. Um, I have a really special thing uh, to do tonight, and that is welcome our next speaker. Um, so today's tonight's speaker um, is a good colleague and friend of Landmark College. He's been with the college for many years now, really supporting our students, working with them in the classroom, working with them as part of the Center for Neurodiversity, uh, and even bringing them to his place of work so they can see a neurodivergent person in the workplace. Um, really, he is a true role model uh, and friend to all of us here at the college. Um, John Elder Robeson is a nationally known advocate speaker, and neurodivergent individual. Um, he is the author of several books, included, including Look Me in the Eye, um, and one probably that has touched my uh, uh, life, particularly as a parent of uh, two neuro neurodivergent children myself, uh, one about his son, Cubby. Um, please join me in welcoming to the stage uh, Mr. John Elder Robeson. <laughs> Well, good evening, folks. I'd, uh, I'd like to just speak for a moment about uh, what Landmark has uh, done and what it uh, means. Um, when I wrote my first book, Look Me in the Eye, I wrote the book because I had been speaking to young people who grew up in abusive households and in bad circumstances to show that you could emerge from that kind of environment you could be okay as an adult. And I saw that that was valuable. It was easy for me to find those kids to speak to. I found them as young adults in the pre-release programs at the jail around where I lived. I found them in group homes. I found them in various settings where state social services people had taken them from bad families. And then I learned that I have this thing called autism. I didn't know that at the time. And autism, of course, explained both my social failures, of which there were many, and my successes in life. And I immediately thought, you know, I should share what I've learned about autism with young autistic people to say that you too can grow up and do okay. I, I'd done okay by then. I had, you know, got me a wife and started a business and was, was doing all right. I, I, <clears throat> but you know what? I couldn't find any autistic people to talk to. And that was why I wrote a book, because I couldn't go to homes because there weren't any. So I wrote this book, and, uh, and I still had very little experience talking to other autistic people. And I went to uh, Washington, D.C., and some parents insist that I come and see their autism school. And um, Ivy Mount School was a K through 12 school for kids with uh, autism and other developmental differences. When I went in there, even though I was, uh, you know, I was 50 years old at the time, and the students were, you know, 10, 12, 13 years old, some even younger. I could see that they were all like me. And what was really cool is they could see that I was like them. And um, that was a, really a unique experience until I came to Landmark. At Landmark, by the time I made the acquaintance of the folks at this school, I had, I had spoken at many, many colleges about autism and diversity. But at all those other schools, People like me were always in the minority. And I was telling a room full of neurotypical people about us, our kind. But at Landmark, they're all our kind. There really is no other. We are all the same at Landmark. And that takes me to a fundamental element that makes Landmark important. Landmark was established 
by folks with this thing we call dyslexia to help younger people with dyslexia not to be normalized by the opinions of some person who doesn't live with dyslexia, but to live as a dyslexic person, or to live as I am as an autistic person, or to live as my wife Mary Pat is as an ADHD-ish person, or any of these other differences that bring us here. Science has shown us that all of these conditions that bring us together at Landmark are neurological first cousins. They set us apart collectively from the majority, but together we're a kind of a pack. And Landmark was the first college to be created on the principle that we now in disability advocacy call nothing about us without us. Landmark is not about so-called normal people teaching so-called abnormal people how to be normal. It is about teaching people with shared difference, how to live with shared difference and be successful. Now, years passed after I wrote my books, I was invited to take part in various scientific organizations. I've now retired from serving a dozen years in our NIH guiding autism policy. One of the things I did as part of our government autism work, I served on the committees the World Health Organization's steering committees that created the definitions of autism and ADHD that we use in the world. And in that role, I was the first actual autistic person to serve guiding the definition of autism. And, and I think that that is the kind of thing that Landmark shows. We show leadership in people who live the conditions we teach, showing young people the way forward. And to go back to why I'm telling you about these World Health Organization committees, one of the things that I hit upon immediately is we collected a set of ways that autism might affect us. Autism might affect our memory. Autism might affect our ability to engage in a conversation with other people. It, it might affect our ability to uh, organize ourselves for daily living. Different cognitive things. The presumption at the World Health Organization is we could pick these ways autism affected us and we could score them from zero to being not impaired at all to five, being totally impaired. And, and frankly, to be blunt here, I said, what kind of bullshit is that? You, you, all you want to do with this definition is you want to say that on a scale of zero to five, we are either marginally as good as somebody else or we are way, way less. And that ain't how it works. I wasn't on the committee because I was marginal and less. I was there on the committee to represent autistic people who are every bit as complete, correct, and as good and capable as anyone else. And so my contribution to that committee was to change that scale of impairment. So we now have scales that go from plus five, really, really superior capability in that domain, to zero, which is average, to minus five, which is highly impaired. And we now recognize that neurological differences, which are what we teach here at Landmark, represent a mix of disability and exceptionality. And that's why Peter said to you, when talking about Landmark being the only neurodiversity college in the United States, that's what this is about. There are other schools that purport to teach how to get along with learning disabilities. We have politely started calling them learning differences. Well, let me tell you, people like me who grew up being told how different and less we are, we don't like that. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but most people don't want to be called dysfunctional or broken or, you know, we don't want to be marginalized. And Landmark embraces the neurodiversity concept, which is a thing that sprang from our community 
which is this idea that we are possessed of certain inborn neurological differences that make us uniquely valuable to society while at the same time disabling us in other circumstances. Disability for us is real, but so are our gifts. And Landmark is the first college to focus on the concept that we are more than just disabled people to be remediated. We are gifted people to be supported while also minimizing our disabilities. That is a fundamentally different approach to teaching people with difference, and that is what we are about here. So, as a neurodivergent person, I wanted to just be clear that that's, that's what we're about. So thank you all.